on this computer. Hi guys, welcome. Um, this is Dr. Vandana Katyal. I'm a specialist orthodontist based in Sydney, and I'm very into digital orthodontics, especially customized digital orthodontics. What does it mean? It means most of my appliances that I get, whether they're braces, whether they are aligners, they're all designed digitally from record taking to the appliance fabrication and often digital appliances are highly customized. So people understand clear aligners, but there's also fixed appliances you can order um, that are customized brackets, customized wires. There's a system that I use that I love. It's called Insignia from Onco. And if I ever have to do braces, this is the system I choose, okay? So what I wanna show you here is how to uh, order digital appliances in the fixed appliance realm. Not something I do a lot. In fact, in my uh, practice, the percentage of fixed appliances is very, very low. I'd say five, seven percent of our patients um, are in fixed appliances. That's because I am. Uh, I love clear liners, and uh, I, you know, it's 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 just something I will never ever give up. It's just the best tool in my practice in terms of the precision I can achieve from it and everything else. But let me just talk about customized fixed appliances insignia. So I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna walk you through how we upload a patient. What would do we say? Um, what are the instructions to the technicians? What am I gonna do? So firstly, I'm gonna share uh, my screen so you can view what we're doing. So we have got a patient here, okay? And this patient we're gonna enter. So let's say the first name is A, uh, Aiden, and last name is something you know and we are going to set a bonding date about five weeks apart now when you're designing your appliances insignia will ask you hey what kind of treatment profile do you want to use i've got a few saved up for class two division one cases for um, class three type of cases you know uh, non-exo deep bite cases i've got quite a few um different ones saved up but what I do want to do for this case, I'm going to be doing my insignia self ligating brackets. I'm just going to start from the scratch. I like my slot size 022. Uh, you can choose a 18, but I want 022. I'm asking them to give me not stock standards. So see, you can buy stock standard brackets, but I like customized brackets. So I'm going to order um, not, not stock insignia self ligating which is what it says here okay insignia self ligating the base of the bracket is highly customized to adapt to the anatomy of the tooth surface of the patient as well as deliver the right torque or the right movement for that patient um, the lower brackets as well, five to five, I want insignia self ligating. Now you can choose clear brackets or metal, but these are, um, when you choose insignia, they understand that it's, it's um, metal. Um, upper follow, uh, molar tubes, again, I like everything custom. I don't like stock. So again, that means that they will give me the best fit for that tooth and in the right position according to my instructions to the technician. You can order hooks if you like, and I do like my hooks on all my molars. Uh, the wire sequence. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky, where you need to understand your patient's needs, right? You need to understand what you're gonna do. Um, I suggest, and this is my suggestion only, you can get um, up to five wires for each arch. You must understand what it is that you're trying to achieve. Okay, if it's a class one case, for example, with mild crowding or moderate crowding, you might just wanna have some round wires customized and then some um, rectangular as you go through treatment. But if you've got a class three case, you might not want any rectangular wires for the lower arch, right? Really, really depends on your treatment objectives. Now that's not the purpose of this video, it's to show you what you can choose. So it's highly customized. Generally, um, this is not the sequence I go for. Um, you can copy the same sequence, maxilla and mandible, but I would be using, for example, my, um, my first wire might be a stock, stock wire. Um, I'm not gonna waste um, 
a nice rectangular wire customized um, by just ordering around. So for example, let's see my first one might be a, um, a copper knight tie, okay? Um, and I like my Damon shapes, so I'm going to go 1425 night tie. That'll be my first customized wire going into this patient's mouth. The next one, I might want to go up in sequence, and I might like a um, 1825, okay? And this is after round wires, stock standard have been used. The next one, if I need a TMA, I might like to do some bends. I might do a 1725 TMA. Um, and then I'm thinking if I need some more bending, I might do a 1925 TMA. And my final wire might be a stainless steel 1925, okay? Um, or it may not, really depends what you wanna achieve. But this case is a class one case with a bit of crowding. So I'm going for this sequence. You can copy this entire sequence to the mandible as well. But when it comes to stainless steel and mandible, I do like to keep it a little bit low. So I might actually just do 1725 for the lower, okay? Um, now you, you can choose what kind of grouping you want, uh, whether you wanna put your threes together. I kind of like this kind of grouping. So just, you know, um, this is how your teeth will be delivered. And it makes it easier for me to place brackets, or you might want to go like this, okay? Really, really depends how you like to do your bonding. You get a really cool um, customized indirect tray um, in groups like that to bond your brackets in the right position. Now, you can choose whether you want your centrals and laterals level or proportionately smaller. I, um, I do this. Now, customize insignia arch form or daemon, okay? I prefer my insignia arch form because I'm going to dictate the arch form to the technician. I don't want everyone blown out like a daemon arch form. Smile arc, you know, they're asking you, would you like to prioritize class one occlusion here? Or do you want to prioritize smile arc where you might want to, you know, create a possible class two tendency, but actually um, uh, you leave a tiny bit of class two or intrude lower anterior. So we're going to go for class one here for now. Overbite, what's your ideal overbite you like to leave a patient with? Um, I think 1.5 um, centimeters is fine and what kind of expansion you like, um, what kind of IPR. Now, I only like IPR cuspid to cuspid. I hate doing IPRs um, on premolars and molars. Taut compensation, whether you can leave it on or off. I usually leave it off, okay? Um, and here is where you need to dictate to the technician everything about this case, okay? What are you gonna do in AP? What are you gonna do in transverse, okay? And, um, what are you going to do in vertical? So I always start with my central incisors, you know, maintain one, one, two, one incisal height might be something we need to do, or you might want to intrude it, right? And you give them approximations, how much arch expansion you want, you know, expand all sides by one to two millimeter, for example, or 1.5 millimeter. So we have a bit of arch expansion built um, per side. Now we know with molar, it'll be uprighting movements rather than bodily. We understand that AP, do we want class one occlusion at the end, you know? And how are we gonna get it? So you might wanna tell the technician, class two elastics will be used. Um, and you might even tell them, you know, distalize my upper arch by one to two millimeter, or mesialize my lower arch, or um, whether this happens biologically, we don't know, but the simulation at least can be created to the best um, level that you wanna do. This is where you tell them, you know, um, and, and the next step is actually uploading your photographs, your STL files, and reviewing that and submitting the prescription. So guys, this was the end of it. And um, I could show you a, a quick case just to go over um, what we're going to do. Um, for example, uh, if you bear with me, I can show you a case which is where we are um, talking about, right? So we have a case here, that's his smile line. 
And we obviously don't want to intrude his upper incisors. We want to, if anything, extrude them slightly, right? So we might say to the technician, um, <coughs> sorry, extrude one, two, 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 two by half a mil. Okay, extrude one, three. He's obviously got a um, cross bite on the one, five. Okay, his upper right second free molar, we want to move it buckily. So we're going to tell the technician that. Okay, let's look at his other photos. So for example, if we look at his profile shot, he's a class one K, so we're not going to really want to change his occlusion too much. And if you really look at his photographs here, let's have a look at his front. You can see the midlines are nearly coincident, so you might want to tell your technician, maintain these midlines, okay? Very similar to how you would communicate to an Invisalign technician or Angel Align or Clear Correct or um, any of these um, aligner companies, you got to pretty much tell the technician here what you want to do. So you can see the seven is not erupted here. Now, the you may not be able to bond the seven bracket straight away, but if your intention is to erupt 1727, let the technician know. Okay, let's look at the buckle occlusion for this case, for example. I don't think we need to make any changes, right? Um, he is pretty much a class one. So we're going to say maintain class one, right? How do we create space for crowding? Do we do proclination? Do we do IPR? Do we do dental expansion? Do we do um, distalization? This is a diagnostic process you as a doctor have to decide. And in this case, particularly, we'll be relying a little bit on dental expansion, a little bit on premolar derotation because this premolar is quite rotated. And when we derotated the one five, we're going to gain space. And a little bit, perhaps, if he's got a Boltons, perhaps, on IPR. So that's his upper premolar, rotated, you know, a 90-degree rotation. And to derotate it, we are going to gain space. Crowding is relatively mild. So we'll use a tiny bit of incisor proclination, tiny bit of expansion, um, derotation of premolar to gain the space to, maintain, to give him the correct um, aesthetics for his incisor crowding. You can see the one seven is just about erupting. So obviously, even though with insignia, I've ordered customized brackets, there's no way insignia can supply me a one seven customized bracket because it hasn't even erupted. They don't even know the surface of it. So what they would do for me, they would probably give me a stock standard one seven and a customized two seven, right? So they're gonna tell me the technician, right? We, we don't know the shape or the form of one seven. We're gonna give you a stock one for now, okay? And later on, you could scan again and order the customized. But to be honest, for sevens, I don't fuss around too much. And uh, it's not practical to order brackets later. So I might just order, you know, my, my three seven and four seven again may not be customized, that's okay. They will supply me stock. So this is the, uh, the state of his lower crowding. You can see, um, you know, we could do a tiny bit of incisor proclination. We've got nice buckle bone here. We're not gonna massively procline him. The crowding is only mild. Bit of expansion, bit of um, incisor alignment and proclination, and that's it. We're done. Uh, keeping the midlines coincident, keeping his class one there. So always start with the smile. Always start with your central incisor. Make sure you know where is the one, one, two, one gonna go? Once you know the one, one, two, one, you design everything from there, right? So we know his one, one, two, one could afford a bit of extrusion. And we know that definitely one, one, two, one cannot be intruded, right? Once we know that, we develop everything else based on that. Right, so this is the end of my video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative for those who want to continue doing fixed appliances and that's cool it's it's your choice i don't do too much uh but um if you do do it or if i ever do a fixed appliance case it's always customized brackets and wires um is there evidence to show this is better than conventional actually no we don't have in fact most of the evidence says there's no difference some papers especially randomized control trial has shown insignia to have more breakages than conventional so we cannot say that this is a um uh, evidence-based um, uh, way of doing things, but it is a very good way of doing things from practice management perspective. Uh, from my perspective as a clinician, um, it saves chair time during bond up. 
It saves uh, a lot of hassles with your arch wire bending and detailing. Um, and so it's more a practice management perspective that I use Insignia for. Uh, but in terms of evidence, there's no harm in using ins Insignia over conventional. And there may not be extra benefits, okay? So if you look at RCTs, um, it's never been shown that Insignia is more beneficial than conventional. Anyways, uh, happy chatting, enjoy this video and uh, leave a comment or ask any questions and I'm happy to answer them. Bye.